Well, there's what President William Ruto uh, envisages for this country 2023 and the cost of living has been at the top agenda or rather top priority. But is it tenable? Joining us this evening is none other than Ken Gishinge, who is a chief economist with Mentoria to help us understand that. Cost of living, you've heard what the president had said. Is it tenable? Many thanks for having me, Regina. Indeed, the cost of living has been a significant issue. Uh, many Kenyans are living between a rock and a hard place, and the numbers have been quite high, almost 9.5, it's come down to 9.1. I think the president was correct in saying that the food component is one of the biggest components that needs to be addressed. So boosting agriculture and with good rains, we do expect to see those coming down. But there are other elements that mm -hmm. contribute to inflation. Now, let's talk about inflation, because if you look at uh, the inflation rate between October, actually September, October, November, uh, it went down a little bit marginally in December, but still in the nine point plus mark. Uh, and now here the president is con a confident saying that it will ease in the next two months. How tenable? What parameters would he be looking at? Uh, well, I think he's possibly looking at the food side. Mm -hmm. The fact that if we have good rains and we have good uh, produce, uh, you might start seeing that number coming down. Um, however, there are other components that drive inflation. This cost of fuel, yes. which is uh, dictated by global events, uh, but there's also the taxation events. When you have VAT added on so many products, also those contribute to inflation. So. Yes, solving food part is critical, but you also need to look at the fuel part, uh, and that's really dictated by global, uh, global geopolitical events. Mm -hmm. Since we've talked about fuel, and fuel um, plays a heavy role, especially when you say basically generally the cost of energy. Mm -hmm. There's something also the president mentioned and said that um, uh, the fuel subsidies was not uh, sustainable in the long run, that it costed uh, the Treasury government more than it actually, and it did not ease the cost of fuel. What do you think? Should we have uh, the subsidies back? Would it ease, you know, pain at the pump or? You know, any time uh, you remove a subsidy, particularly on fuel, it means the cost of fuel prices go up. And it means the cost of transport, the cost of production goes up. So what we've seen is a reduced economic activity because a taxi driver perhaps would have gone 10 kilometers, will probably do five kilometers. So reduced economic activity can lead to a slowdown and can lead to lower revenue collection. So in my estimate, I think we should have kept the subsidy. Yes, would that, it was. Would this have been ex, 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 uh, attainable yes, in the long run? Yes, we were spending 16 billion shillings per month. Yes. Uh, but the argument is um, when you're spending 16 billion shillings a month, but you have economic activity going on mm -hmm. and you're able to raise revenue from those, those economic activities, you're able to offset mm -hmm. the cost of that subsidy. And that's the reasoning behind the subsidy that, yes, it's a cost, but the revenue you collect from vibrant economic activity will offset. Mm -hmm. that. So you side with the president on that? Uh, well, I, I, I would have believed that it would have been better to if retain, retain the, the subsidy, yes. Now let's uh, find out what your take would be when it comes to matters of what the president said in regard to matters of Hasler Fund, where he said that he is ready to take full responsibility uh, in case uh, the hustler, the fund, actually does not do well. Now, the head of state backed the fund, insisting that it will lead to reduced interest rates. He further said that the fund is fully dependent on technology and headed by a consortium of legal experts to ensure that it runs smoothly. Ruto also added that the second phase is yet to, is set to be rolled out next month with the aim of lending to circles and other such investments. So over 21 million Kenyans have borrowed 12 billion shillings from the Hustler Fund. From an economist's point of view, the Hustler Fund, do you think it is meeting its objective and this is re-energizing MSMEs and also just ensuring that Wanjiko, majority of Wanjiko, gets access to credit? I think the concept of the Hustler Fund was extremely innovative. The idea that you can get uh, money to citizens for them to be able to conduct activities, um, I think that is profound, and I think it's something that needs to be even be studied more. Um, however, I think the first implementation was a bit underwhelming mm -hmm. um, in terms of just the amount that was given 
and the expectations of it to be paid in two weeks. Uh, so I think the second phase that's going to come in February, um, I really hope that lives up to uh, what was in the campaign, mm -hmm. which was money for businesses. So even if you're a small business, you do need, uh, I mean, 500 shillings is a bit on the lower side. You do need um, a big amount mm -hmm. to be able to conduct. Even if you're running a barber shop, you know, the, the equipment to shave, it's about 7,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you do need slightly bigger. So we do hope the second phase uh, sort of really goes towards the SMEs and towards, and if it does, I think it can be a major success. Mm -hmm. But no, sorry, pardon. Uh, the sustainability of it, given the, uh, the statistics that we've received as by as at the end of December, around um, 10 billion had been disbursed, but only uh, actually 30% of that had been repaid. That issue, you know, it, it's quite political. We have some leaders urging their people to take the fund, not pay it back. But now, how will this... Um, in the long run affect uh, the effectiveness of this particular fund from where is it uh, from where is it? I think that was largely expected because um, the original idea of the hustler fund was it was supposed to go to small businesses. small businesses tend to move money in and out every day so for them repayability is quite simple uh, but in the first um, instance of this implementation it went out to anybody um, who had a mobile phone um, people, whether you're doing business, whether you have a job or don't have a job. Um, so it was naturally expected, mm -hmm. from my perspective, that uh, there'll be elements that would be stranded in terms of um, paying it back. Mm -hmm. So possibly the lessons learned in the first one will, are what will guide um, the second phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's find out. Uh, President William Ruto has promised Kenyans that he will make the Galana Kulalu irrigation project uh, stand or rather successful the project stalled in 2019 owing to the alleged misappropriation of funds the head of state was speaking last night at state house in a round table media interview said uh, through the project the country will be able to produce adequate food that will make the country food secure Kishinga, what's your take in regard to the, uh, the president's uh, sentiments around galana kulalu uh, well i think uh, the president is alluding to the fact that there are economies of scale when you have 10,000 acres, you're able to do things at a cheaper cost and at a faster cost towards uh, food production, which was, is a priority now and was a priority of the previous administration. So I think to the extent that that can be revived, because expectations were very high on that. Um, I think the failure of it was not an economic issue. I think there were internal uh, wrangles that made it. I don't think it was an economic issue. Uh, but I think to the extent that that can be revived and contribute to the food reserve, I think can, can still be a game changer for the, the country. The president revoked the subdivision of this particular land. Maybe you're coming from that point. You know, with a large, large scale and such, you can do much more. But before we uh, bring this uh, conversation to a close, let's look at where we are economically. Uh, in June, we have debts to pay. Mm -hmm. And the president there earlier on said that his administration targets to at least, uh, you know, rake in or rather collect mm -hmm. an extra trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. When I heard that as a Kenyan, I'm just thinking, oh my God. Where will we get the money? Is it tenable? Well, um, I think there are two parts to this. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there is the revenue collection part, which we need to continue as a country, because the country is growing. We are a country of 55 million people, mm -hmm. so we do need the resources. And this country is capable of, if we have the right tax policies. Um, I, was not, I was a bit surprised that there was no mention of a change in tax policy, because if you look at the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, there have been talks about moving Kenya towards more progressive tax laws and less regressive tax laws. Tax laws. But As you speak, from, from an economist's point of view, we find ourselves within the current tax uh, policy, we tax income and not wealth. If we were to change, interchange, would it change our coffers? Taxing uh, wealth is really unlike focusing on income. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And I think that was the original direction. And in fact, when you look at the principles of taxation, those that we tend to support what, what you call progressive mm -hmm. tax laws. When you have a VAT-driven economy, those are regressive tax laws. Um, they impact the people at the bottom the most. Yes. And uh, given that you're trying to run a bottoms up, uh, economic philosophy, it, 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 it kind of contradicts it. Um, so I think I wish they would have really reviewed, because this is when you come up in a new administration, you have a really good opportunity to review the tax policy. Uh, but that said, 
I think the issue of digitizing our payments so that the government can collect revenue, I think that's going to be a good story. My biggest concern is the 300 billion shillings tax cut. And I'm surprised it didn't come up yesterday. None of the journalists raised it. And that's really the big mm -hmm. topic in the room. Yes. When you have 300 billion shillings budget cuts, uh, what that means is you'll have lower spending, government spending, you'll have reduced cash flow in the economy, and that will reduce, mean you'll have a tougher business environment yes, yes. and higher unemployment. I was a bit surprised that didn't, that come, didn't up come up because that is actually really the, the elephant in the room. The in and the room. you see, maybe it's because uh, you speak business, and uh, as we had our journalists there, we were more of a political <laughs> journalist than financial <laughs> reporters. Well, that has been our guest this evening, just trying uh, to unpack the President's Roundtable that took place yesterday there. Ken Geshinga, Chief Economist, Mentoria. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Um,